All right, so we're recording now. This is uh, Coach Coach Jason McLeod from Portland High School uh, coming in today to talk a little bit of screen game for us. Uh, you know, Coach has, has been around the block as a play caller, uh, run the spread offense for, for quite a while, uh, and I think his teams have always been renowned for pretty, being pretty good in the screen game. So, Coach, appreciate you presenting today, and uh, I'm going to kind of turn it over to you. Sure. Um, I just shared my screen, guys, so you should see a, a Word document. Now, I'll fly through this relatively quick, um, but I said it offline prior to everybody being on. I'll say it again. Um, can't thank you enough, Mike, for, for starting this and keeping this thing going. This is fantastic, especially during this time that we're in right now. It's, it's, it's awesome being able to sit in the comfort of our own homes and our offices and whatnot and, and, and be able to you know, chalk it up with football and, and, and get some get some reprieve from everyday life that's going on right now. So this is fantastic. So thank you so much. Um, as Coach said, going to screen game, um, you know, I'm going to show you a couple different screens that we've run and I've run over the years. And it doesn't mean that we're going we're gonna to run each and every single one or have it in our suite of, of plays for the week. But for us, you know, there's a, there's a myriad of reasons why – why I and Slash, we have done the screen game. And it's very based on the teams I've coached. Um, I'll just, you know, going back to when I was at Wyndham, you know, year in and year out, we had big physical linemen and we were able to run the ball and mix things up with the pass and screen game. But, I mean, it, was, it wasn't like an all-the-time thing. Fast forward now to Portland where, you know, we've been known as a running team over the years and now – purely because of the guys we have in our program now, we don't have that, I use a Coach Capone term, we don't have that dude in the program right now where he's going to blow you off the ball. Um, we have a guy who's, who was graduating this year, it's pretty good for us, but that's just one of five. And so for us, running the screen game is a good avenue to accomplish a couple different things that we feel we can get some success on. So to get right into it, you know, why we run screens? Well, first and foremost, how it applies to us, and I'm sure it applies to multiple people in their program, is, is to get our athletes in space. Bottom line, um, you know, if you're a big offensive line guy and you're looking at that, that, that seven on six, that six on five matchup up front, we want to kind of widen that out a little bit and turn into maybe a, a two on one or a three on two matchup. Or if we're pulling a lineman or multiple linemen, we might get into a four on two matchup. Um, we like that. We like those odds a little bit better, especially when the ball is in the athlete's hands. Um, getting him into space from the hash out might be better for us versus working inside the ashes. Um, so that's a big thing for us. Um, it took us a while last year to get grasp of that, you know, new coaching staff, new way of doing things and graduating previously a pretty good senior class, but, um, you know, that's what we're trying to do right now. And for us, also, it fits who we are. It fits our talent level. It fits our roster. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll do more of that. Um, to kind of extend it a little bit more, you know, it helps if you don't have a dominating offensive line. Um, again, we don't have those dudes. We, we don't have those dudes where we can run the power play, the isolation play, or even the toss play and, and get guys blocking guys man on man. It's really hard for us uh, right now, presently. That might – that might change down the line, but for us, it's that's what it is. So how it helps those guys is it creates angles. There's less focus on beating the defender in front of you. Um, and the focus for us is more on occupying defender. So we'll set guys off. We'll set offensive linemen off in their path. And, then, you know, a lot of times they'll have a guy or an area to block, depending on the play. But we're not looking for them to – hold their block for three, four, or five seconds at a time. We want them to get on them and do the best they can and play in that man-to-man -man defensive mentality like it's in basketball. But, you know, we're not looking for them to drive up the ball. Keep going. You know, we're looking to gain yards by sometimes not even blocking the guy. And we, use, we just call it positive by negative. So, you know, it's the old adage, we, you know, we got a big – triple option guy on here and John Moore and we talked about earlier where you know he's going to do those things the triple option by many times not blocking a certain defender and forcing that defender to make the wrong decision and making the offense make the right decision 
Well, for us in the screen game, it's a little bit of an extension of that where, you know, we're, we're, we're duping a guy or we're suckering a guy into a, a space and we're going to go just away from him. So that's good for us. How else does it help us? Well, you know, you go back to many teams back in the day where they had that premier running back getting the ball 25, 30, 35 times a game. If you're a receiver, maybe you're getting the ball once, twice, or maybe not at all. Again, from day one, we're putting it out there with the kids that any one of you, especially if you're an athlete, you can do some good things in space, you're going to have an opportunity to get the ball for us in our offense. And, you know, right from the onset, it makes these kids feel like they're a bigger part of the program and a bigger part of your offense. So for us, we like that a lot. Um, again, getting athletes into space, for us, it's an extension of our run game. Maybe, again, Maybe going to a game, you might traditionally have, I don't know, eight, nine, 10, 12 plays you're going to run in the run game. Well, for us, we may whittle that down to maybe three, four, five run plays and then have two, three, four, even five different screen plays we're going to run. And that will be really an extension of our run game. So um, obviously you're accomplishing it in different ways. And um, especially if you're completing a pass behind the line of scrimmage, for us, it's the extension of the run game. I mentioned it before, less emphasis on the, uh, the running back. Um, one thing for me and, um, you know, all the teams I've coached before, um, we haven't been short of dressing things up. And, you know, for us, it's, it's really a smoke and mirrors type game. Uh, but we like to, you know, we're utilizing, if we're running a, a screenplay to our receiver on the left outside, you know, we can – there's so many different ways that we can dress that up based on who our opponent is, um, based on how well our team can line up. And, you know, for me, you know, it's kind of a new way of doing things, but it gets the kids involved in a fun way. So um, those are big things for us. And then lastly, you know, it, well, not lastly, but one of the things it does, it forces your, your, your opponent to defend the entire field. Um, again, if you're predominantly a run team and you're running between the tackles, you're cutting the field down the thirds, in my opinion. If you're running screens outside, inside, and in between the tackles, now you're forcing defensive coordinators to defend sideline to sideline and vertically as well. And there's only 11 guys you can put on the field, and as much as we can spread those guys out and not even focus on the point of attack, the better for us. Um, lastly, we like to run in any down and distance scenario. Um, you'll see a clip. We had a fourth and two one time on the plus 30, 35 yard line, and we ran our screenplay. Why? Because we didn't feel like we can run it down the throat of our opponent. We weren't good enough to do it. Um, our quarterback had kind of a rough first half, so we didn't really want to throw anything downfield. But an easy way for us to get the first down, in our opinion, was to throw a really, you know, a nice, easy inside screen pass, get our athlete in the space, and allow him to get the first down for us. So, uh, for us, we don't care. It could be first and 10. It could be, you know, second and short. It doesn't really matter for us. We're going to run in any down and distance scenario. Um, second area here, and I'll move a little bit quicker. Um, how you make it fun? Well, excuse me, how you make it part of your team offense? So for us, we make it fun. Um, again, I mentioned some things before about dressing things up. Um, I think also, too, with your offensive linemen, they got to feel like they're a valued part of their offense. And everybody on this thread right now is already doing that. But it's just an added level that you can make your linemen feel more part of the offense. Um, and, then, and they're moving. They're not always inside. Um, again, multiple players getting the ball. We're dressing things up. Um, the la one of the last bullet points there is built-in conditioning. Um, you know, for us – our linemen, if they're moving in space, they're moving more than two, three, four yards upfield. In some cases, they're moving 10, 15 yards upfield. So the more you run and the more you rep these different screen plays, it's really subliminally, it's built in condition for them as well. Um, so again, it's less emphasis on run blocking. Uh, and for us, you know, how we do it is it's a daily part of our practice. Simple as that. Um, just about every day of the week we're on the field, we're working on a component or a facet of the screen game. And our hope and expectation is we're going to get better every single day and every single week doing it. 
Um, so the guys know it, the coaches know it, um, and definitely our opponents know it too. So we see a lot of different ways teams try to stop screen against us. And for us, it keeps us on our toes. So I'll show you that with you. So, Mike, can everybody see me on the screen now? On the, uh, the board, excuse me. Yeah, you're good, coach. All right, thank you. Just keep sure. that big head out of the way now. Yeah, I will. I'm sorry. I, I got a big head. Sorry. Um, so for us, this is a, a suite of screens we use. Now, the first thing I'm going to go over is double screens. But before we get into that, I want to kind of get into how we marry up screens for us. Now, there's a couple of different keywords and tags that we use to help, you know, limit the, the verbiage and the terminology and for us to accomplish multiple things. But for us, our, our receivers, they're inside and outside receivers. Now, it doesn't mean we move guys around. It doesn't mean a Z can't line up out here or your Y or your X or whatever you guys want to call them. But how we label a certain player getting a screen is by right outside, right inside, left inside, and left outside. And we use these key terms for each individual player. So on the outside for us, it's Roxy. On the inside to the right, it's Rita. And going down the left side, it's Lisa and Lola. So for us, if we're running Roxy, for example, we're running to the right outside receiver, and there's a blocking scheme built into that, and you're all the way down the line. And how we do double screens is we marry it with our running back. Now, again, we do it a couple of different ways, but for our running back, and I'll get into the blocking schemes and the reads in a minute, but for our running back going to the right, we have a razor or an east call, and he's doing the same thing, but the read is different based on the call. And as we're going to the left, it's laser and west. And again, he's doing the same thing on those, out of those calls, but the read for our quarterback and how we're going to block it is a little bit different in those situations. So that's one of the first things I want to show everybody before we start getting into it. So. One of our first double screens is we're going to marry Roxy, Rita, Lisa, Lola with our east and west screen. So for this, in this situation, we're going to go east, and we're going to marry it with our Lola screen. And again, what you want to marry, again, going back, if we're going to run east or we're going to run razor, we're going to come back the other way. Just like if we're going to go laser, we're going to go west. We're going to come back the other way on our, our double screen calls. So when we go East Lola, the read, I'm just going to draw up a basic 40, a full four defense here and go over our read. So first thing is East for us. Now, again, where you line up your back is going to be based on, one, your team's choice, but also what the defense is doing in front of you. I'll give you an example. Sometimes when we line up the back to a certain side, they're making a blitz or a stunt call based on where that back is. So if we're seeing that, you know, we'll, we'll change things up. But by and large, if we're going east, we're going to line them up on that side or in the pistol, which we call dot. Now, there's a couple different things we can do to kind of counteract that, where, again, if you see him blitz or certain blitz coming from this side, we'll move them over here pre-snap, and we'll get them on the move and going. But, again, we go east. He's going to take a parallel path, all right, and realistically, he's running right to the sideline on a parallel path. Now, we try to get in with this, this certain player. We can take a drop step and gain a little bit of depth, all right, so it's a backward pass, but also it's creating an angle for the quarterback to throw it. When we run this play, we're reading the play side in. Now, we block this two different ways, and it's purely based on what the, our opponent's doing on a week-to-week -week basis. And I'll give you an example. One of the ways we like to do it is we'll tell this tackle, play side tackle, to start getting on a downhill path like he's blocking power. And we see this guy a lot of times bending off that read. That makes that read easier for the quarterback to accomplish. So 
I'll go over that way right now, and then I'll go over a change up that we've done or we toyed with a little bit in the past. But first and foremost, we're gonna have him blocked down. We're gonna wall off the front side backer. Period in the story. Because up front, this guy's gonna pull. And a lot of times these backs or backers reading front side, the guards over them, it's gonna make that really hard for us or really important for us to get that guy walled off. Now again, he's going on a parallel path. If he's any but bit athletic, you can get out there. For us, that's great. Out here, we're walking in space. Now again, there's a lot of different things you can do here, but we just label them one and two. All right, first threat, second threat. Here in the story. Now I'm not here to tell, you know, how to stop walking in space, but for us, we, you know, we, we'll burst off the line, we'll throttle down, there's a certain cushion, and, and we'll kind of use basketball mentality with these kids, because a lot of these kids play basketball on our varsity program or our JV program, where we're sinking in our hips, and we're getting that basketball man-to-man -man mentality, we're going we're gonna to occupy a space as much as we can. Now, for the quarterback, he's going to open straight up, and he's going to eyeball that front side end. If he bends at all, all right, right for us, we're going to throw the ball out in space to our receiver. And at worst, we're going to get a two-on-two -two game. Or with our guard pulling flat and easy as he can, he's going to get in here and he's going to insert himself to any sort of threat that's going to come to that side. That's how we're going to block it over there. Now, the other scenario could be that end either goes nowhere or expands right away in that swing route. If he does, we're going to marry up the Lola screen this side. For us, Lola, this guy's the second option. Now, at this point in time, if the quarterback sees him going nowhere or expanding out, his feet can't stop moving. And that's a big problem we had last year with our kid. First year starter, didn't play as a freshman due to injury, but he's a big kid. His feet aren't very, aren't very smooth or fluid. They can throw the ball pretty darn well. So we're, we're less worried about him not being able to throw the ball from here up, but where his feet are. And more importantly, too, you got linemen coming down on him. All right, he's going to be able to create passing lanes and be able to move his feet based on what the defense is doing. So, again, if he's not going to throw it here, we want game depth right away. On this side, this is a pretty important block for us. It's being done by the next possible eligible receiver. Now, again, he could be in the slot. There are times, too, we put him in the backfield, have him come out of the backfield and block that corner. All right? But one of the most important things we do, and we wrap it up in practice, where we'll literally put on the line of scrimmage, we'll put a cone here just inside that receiver and make that receiver go flat before he works himself up. All right? And the reason for that is we don't want him going right at him, this corner undercutting him and disrupting the play for us. So we want him going flat. All right, and then working his way up and walling off that receiver or right, that corner. For us, it's the first nearest threat. Again, we're just labeling the first guy from the sidelines who he's getting. The receiver, or in this case, the second part of the, uh, the, the screen pass, he's going to burst off the line and hopefully help him out a little bit too. All right, and we have him burst off the line for three steps. Now, for us, three steps gives the time – or the ball gets snapped, the, catch, the quarterback to catch it, him to identify his read, and also him to gain some depth backwards. All right, so we go one, two, three, and we're inside foot up first team, so our inside foot's up. So we're taking our first step, in this case, for our left foot, we're going one, two, three, and it's three short, choppy steps. We're sinking our hips and hopefully accomplishing getting this guy to get into his pass drop, all right? Simply put, he'll replace those steps. And for drill purposes, too, we'll use that same exact cone in practice to identify where the line of scrimmage is. And we'll put another one there to identify about a yard and a half to two yards deep and make him get in that shoe as he works his way back to the cornerback. Now, these three guys are also very important as well. All right. And, this, and what these three guys do is an extension of a lot of what we do in all of our other screen plays. They're all going to pass that vertically. Now, we've done different things with these guys to get these guys to all do different things. But for right now, we feel as though having these guys all three pass that accomplishes a couple different things. If he's not blitzing, it accomplishes him into the, into the, um, his pass responsibility. 
here. Hopefully we're getting some sort of rush. All right. They're going to pass it. Same thing for these guys. This guy here. He's going one, two, three, coming back. These guys are going one, two, three, and then getting into the landmarks to block. Simply foot for him. We're going to allay him, let him go, and we're blocking number two. We're going to wall off that near flat defender. All right. For the guard, we're going to have him follow the path. And as he's looking at the numbers of his teammate, he's looking at his upfield hip, and he's going to come off that upfield hip and wall off the front side backer. All right. That creates what we call, we just call a shoot. All right. And we tell the center to get through the shoot. All right. Simply put, he's aiming for his upfield hip, and he's getting through the shoot. And if we accomplish it right, as this receiver works his way back, all right, and gets the ball, he's going to get through the shoot into space. Now, facing our opponents, we'll see teams spying certain defenders. All right. And when they do, We'll change up the blocking scheme for this center, and we'll make what we call an ambush call. Don't mind my hand right now. All right, an ambush for us is he does the same exact thing I just said before, but once it gets to where that tackle vacates, he looks back for a kill shot on any sort of lurking offense, a defensive lineman. Because, again, if you're a screen team, and defensively you're preparing to play us, you're, you, you may – at certain times, put a spy defender there. And if we know that, we'll just tell our center many times to make an ambush call or we'll just say, hey, you're ambushing. All right. And we know him, he's going to come back and lurk out for any sort of linemen that are there. So that's one of our double screens. Obviously, the end result there is not very Picasso ish, but we're going to be here a little bit. So again, going staying with our double screens, if we wanted to go the other way, again, I'll dress this up in a minute for us. But if we wanted to, yeah, if we wanted to run it the other way around, now again, we're gonna go, we'll say we're gonna run in west. In this case, I'll just say we'll run in Rita. Okay. And for us. The blocking schemes, the reads are all the same, just obviously in this case we're flip-flopping it with our first reads to the left and our seconds coming back to the right. Uh, quarterback steps the same. The only difference in this case is we're making a reader call in the back end, which tells the right inside receiver he's getting the ball. Now, if he's getting or if he's a second option, this guy's got to have some semblance of a brain and know that he's not going to be involved in the play. So to start back up again, going west for us, reading front side end. All right, we're going to wall this guy off. Hopefully that down path gets him to bend. If he bends right away, we're throwing it out here. First threat, second threat. Now again, could things change? Could this guy be in the box and this guy walk up? Okay, you got to know what's going on where, again, we're going first threat, no, uh, first threat second threat. Now, if this guy doesn't know where the threat lies, we just make an ooze call. Ooze for us means he's going to outside release with two steps. Then he's going to work vertically and get in that man-to-man -man defense mentality. And for us, whichever player shows up, he then becomes that second threat. All right? So that would be, again, again, he's going to pull, and it's a tough pull for him sometimes, especially if he's bending. Or he's gonna pull, get that first that next threat. If this guy shows and he coming coming late on a pass responsibility, it could be him here. He's gonna fill in where he best fits. He's the garbage man. He's cleaning up the trash for us. All right. Again, if he goes nowhere or he comes out on the swing, then we're coming back to the right now. We're again over here. We're gonna pass up the three steps. Now over here is a little bit different because the inside receiver is getting it. We're not going to have him go vertically for three steps like if we made a Roxy call. We're going to have him come out here like he's blocking for Roxy. All right, so he's going one, two, three. Again, think of the cones here in the drill scenario. All right, he's going to release vertically outside. Now he's going to retrace his steps and come back. Okay, and then from there, he has the nearest threat. Again, flat defender. He's expanding. He's defending the flat. That's great for us. 
If he's not, meaning this guy's coming kind of defending the flat, he's more of a curl player. Again, it's a bad draw, and we want him coming out flat and identifying that, that flat defender. Here, front side backer. In this case, it might be the will. All right, he's going through the shoot. Again, if you have any lurking linemen you see on video or during the game, it could be a it could be an adjustment on a week-to-week -week basis, or it could be an in-game adjustment where we have an ambush call for him, the center, where he's gonna get any lurking linemen. So for us. The double screen, we like to marry the west, either to Rita or Roxy, the east, either to Lola or Lisa. All right. Now, a couple of different ways you can dress this up before I get in the razor laser piece. Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time how we dress up everything here, but you know. One way we like to do things is sometimes if we are in this, this Twins open set, there could be a chance you could have or you might not have a flat defender or an overhang player showing right at the back where you might get a scenario like this where if they're in two, this guy's going to come late. So, again, you know, how we want to do that is we may want to run west and we come back here and run Roxy. Okay, again, we're reading him. All right, if he's going to come late or if he's not going to be an aggressive downhill flat defender, all right, we like the matchup where we're just getting out here. We're going to read him. All right, if he bends, all right, we got a one on one matchup out there and we like it. If he comes late or he comes late, this guy's a dude, this guy's good in the space. It might be three or four yards for these guys threaten us. And I'll show you on film in a minute here where we're facing man to man teams. And this guy, the man-to-man -man responsible for that, we won't even block him. All right, we won't even block him sometimes. We'll let him get out there and get in the space. Or sometimes we'll crack and have this guy follow. But for us, that's a different way for us to dress it up. The other way for us to dress it up is just go three by one. All right. Now, if we want to go three by one, all right, and we get this kind of look where this guy, this guy's a third man, Defending over here, all right, we might get in a situation where we come over here, we run west, and then now if we make a reader call, all right, the question may be which one of these guys is getting the ball. Well, for us, I mean, this guy's just an R for us. This kick could be a Z, it could be a Y or H here. If we want the Z in this case to get the ball, we'll just say Z Rita. So we'll literally say West Z Rita, all right. That's just one way for us to dress things up. We use motion. We use two by two, three by three by one. It doesn't really matter for us. Again, all based on your opponent as to what you want to do with that double option play. Again, I can't stress enough. I mean, it's not something you're going to put in and run it with success unless you're having a drill in practice, whether you're putting up a spacing strip or whatnot, and you're having a coach here and running back here going out and you're having them repeatedly read this guy, all right? Because the next component of it, when we run razor and laser, is now instead of us taking this edge guy, all right, we're reading front side backer, all right? We're blocking the line, and we're reading this guy. Again, it could be a scenario where he has pass responsibility for him. And if he expands and he doesn't go, we're going to throw the ball. So for us, that's razor and laser. So razor and laser, it replaces the east and west component for us. And I'll show you on film here in a few minutes, but we do a couple of different things with razor and laser, especially when we're reading the back, the front side backer, is some, some weeks, you know, again, you'll see on film where his motion, or we, we'll motion him automatically. So when we make a razor call, all right, he might be lined up in the dot for us, and before the ball snapped, he's getting this short, quick motion. And hopefully, when the ball gets snapped, he's outside that tackle box. And immediately, before the quarterback even gets the snap in his hands, he's already gaining leverage on that man-to-man -man defender that he's reading. All right? And it could be a, you know, a zone read or a man read. But again, 
if we feel as though this guy, whether he's a man or some responsibility, all right, we'll motion this guy out. All right, and again, I'll show you on film. But for us, a real simple change up with east and west and reading that edge guy is, you know, that edge guy is doing different things and he's complicating the read for their quarterback. Or he's one of those guys where, you know, he might be better than him. All right. It could be a situation where, you know, we're getting false reads off that where he's going to bend when he sees this and he's going to come flat and still be able to make a play athletically. All right. That's, that's bad for us. All right. So we'll do a couple different things where we'll now put a guy on him and we'll read the front side back. So again, for us, we run Razor. And we'll marry that with Lola. All right. And I'll do it based off of pre-snap motion. But again, this this front here, this three high, four under look that we see sometimes in our conference, where we know that most of the time he's a flat defender. We know most of the time he's a he's a curl, hook curl type defender, but a lot of times he's responsible for him coming out of the backfield. We'll run this screen because we feel as though with the motion. And who this player is, he might be more athletic and gifted than him. So we'll run Razor instead of running East. So again, the read for us is now that it's changed from here to here. And how we block it up front, we just tell the front two side guys to reach like crazy. All right. Now, again, last year we had a kid who can do this pretty well and reach. If you don't have that guy, again, motion getting him outside where he's lined up is going to help you by that alone. But for us, we want to reach the first threats front side. Again, the rules don't change for these guys. So that makes some synergies there where he's blocking first threat, he's blocking second threat. There's a couple of different things you can do. If you've seen teams exchanging responsibilities, we can make a news call and make it a little bit easier for him. Again, first threat, second threat. All right, we're reading front side back. If you then open up, reach front side backer. All right, if there's any sort of leverage, by the time he gets the ball, I mean he goes nowhere or he doesn't expand like crazy, we're throwing the ball to him right now in space. The quarterback's decision making is over now. All right, now, again, depending on who you're playing, all right, this could be an easy read or a tough read. Now, if it's a tough read for us, we're probably not going to run it with our kid, but. Again, we feel like we have a matchup here. We're going to take that as many times as we possibly can during the game. As for us, that's just an extension of our outside zone game. We're telling these two guys to block a run play that is the same exact run play that we run each week, which is outside zone. We're going to say, hey, you two guys, block outside zone now. All right, don't worry about this guy because we're going to not block him. But for you guys here, block outside zone. All right. Yeah, if you can get that, great. On the snap of the ball, he sees him motioning and it's not kind of loosening up on motion. Or is that good enough to come outside and expand and get some leverage on him? We're going to come back around Lola. Three pass sets, three steps to replace. All right, flat first step, flat defender, off the front side backer. He's in the shoot. Or if we're getting lurking linemen, all right, we'll ambush him. Get the hand right in there. So, that's how we're kind of doing things. Now, can you run Razor without motion? Absolutely. All right. But again, it's just one way for us, because we're reading this backer, to motion him pre-snap to get a little bit of leverage on him. And again, for us, you know, like last year, we took a guy who was a starting quarterback for us as a junior, played a little bit as a sophomore. He was more of a scat back, running back type kid last game of the year. He's playing the slot for us. Our running back gets hurt. Well, all right, you're going back here. And now we're telling him or asking him to do more razor and lasers for us. Why? Because he's good in space. He's not good here, but he's good out here. And that's what we had to do to play the cards we had at that game. All right, so th that's really the extent of our double screens there. And how we do things, and again, you're going to see us 
dress things, these things up many different ways, but at the same time too, you know, you know, whether we're reading, you know, front side in or front side backer, we're repping that up in practice with our quarterback, getting him comfortable with that read, getting him comfortable how his footwork is. We're obviously expanding it to our perimeter blocking with our inside and outside receivers and how we're going to do that from a technique standpoint. All right, we're repping that every single day. All right, but again, if you have a kid under center who is not comfortable doing those things, then this may not be the best thing for you. Um, but for us, because of the complexity of our team and our makeup of our roster, it works out well for us, particularly where if you're a quarterback or a coach who make a bad read or a bad call, sometimes the athletes can pick up the slack for you and make you look really good when you do it. So um, even when the quarterback sometimes makes the wrong decision, all right, it, sometimes the, the result turns out pretty good because of the guys you have catching the ball in space. And that's a big thing for us is this space, okay? There's less chance of multiple defenders to disrupt the play and make bad things happen. Um, so, Coach, are there any questions there? Nothing yet, Coach. I just threw it out there if anybody has questions to chime on in. But cool. you must be doing so well in explaining it. Nobody's got anything. We got a lot of viewers no, up I, there, though. I, I, I talk and I gab too much. So No, man, you're doing a good job. Keep rolling. All right. So – Double screens, that's it for us there. That's, that's what I can show you with that. Um, we'll get on the slip screen now. So slip screen for us, and we literally, we will literally, when we tell our team this, we, we call it screen right, screen left. All right, and we don't say slip screen right, slip screen left. We don't have any special code words like up here. And we'll, we'll just literally say, hey, we're gonna run screen right, guys. This is screen right. Um, and, you know, every now and then you may get a player saying, well, I thought these plays are screens. Well, they are, but, again, going back to my – the document we had, it's really an extension of our run game. For us, we run our slip screen play. We literally call it screen right, screen left, all right, and we're, we're trying to accomplish a couple of different things. But, again, if we're throwing the ball well, all right, and we're loosening up defenses by throwing the ball, namely the secondary – but we're getting frustrated down linemen who are trying to get their hands on the quarterback. For us, the slip screen is a good scenario, a good play for us to run. And we do that, we're trying to bait and sucker the edge guy, or actually all the linemen, but again, we're, we're doing some different things up front that hopefully make us accomplish things. So first things first, again, this isn't – you know, this isn't, you know, reinventing the wheel here when we run our, our slip screen. So on the perimeter, by default, and again, if you're a four-vert type team or if you're a team that runs four verts in your, playoff, in your playbook, it's easy because by default, we're telling these guys to go, go on four-vert. Now, there could be scenarios on a week-to-week -week basis where we will attach a concept either front side, back side, or mirrored, where we want them to do a certain concept to draw maybe a linebacker or a flat defender out of things, all right? But again, by default, we're telling these guys all go vertical, all right? Now, our running back, based on which way the screen's going, again, we'll change this week to week. Again, it goes back to if we see teams and him line up on this side and the blitz coming from that side, it might be a good side for us to screen to. There are other times where if we line him up here and we feel as though this guy is going to start pinning his ears back as he's away from the call, all right, we like to screen to that side. Therefore, we'll keep him there. And we'll insert him and screen up, you know, to that person's side, and he'll be the sucker guy. All right? So, again, a lot of different ways we can do it. But right now, I'm going to show it where the back is on the side we're screening to. And we don't have a call where our running back lines up. We, we, you know, again, it changes week to week, but, you know, if we're calling screen right and we're playing a certain opponent and based on our homework and our film studies, we feel it's best in the lineup on that side, it's just built into the play for us. We don't have a strong, weak, or a near far call. Literally for us, this is base screen right, all right? Literally, that's what it's for. It's for us. But. Again, we're going to do a couple different things, but 
when we face teams and facing even fronts, we have a couple different protections we run, but one of the ones that we run is with him inserting and him blocking you know, basically near backer to next backer. All right, sometimes we'll man this up and we'll have him block the front side backer. And a lot of times the center will be responsible for here. I mean, man up here and the quarterback responsible for here. It could be a lot of different things, but for right now, we're going to go face off these two pass setting, getting an outside rush and us getting on here and getting on here and then executing our screen responsibility. So for the back, he's got an insert. All right. Quarterback, he's going to he's gonna start into a three step drop like everybody teaches him to do. Once he gets that three step drop, he's going to pause, he's going to bounce, and that's that's the point in time from a timing standpoint, we're going to start releasing linemen. So they have a clock in their head up front as to what we're going to do. Now, when we block our slip screen, these three guys, again, I'll show you a change of what we do based on what the teams do against us. To them, it is exactly like Roxy and Rita. So from a coaching standpoint and expanding your screen offerings, it's easy for the linemen, all right, because they're all going to pass that one, two, three, all right. Now, where things change a little bit, and I'll get to that second part in a minute, is with this defensive end, and especially if he's a good player. That's two trains of thought. If he's a really good player and athletic as heck, we want to screen to this side. But if he's a really good player, athletic as heck, and he's really smart, it could be disrupting your screen. You can do some different things on that. But if we feel as though these guys are going to rush and the quarterback's going to bait him in, simply put, he's going to release, block flat defender. He's going to curl, block front side backer. All right, he's going to be the trash man, the garbage man, unless we make an ambush call. Really bad. Backside here, if they're not involved in the screenplay, they're just blocking man-to-man -man principles. All right, for us, if these guys are going to pass drops, they're going to lock on them and stay on them. They aren't going to release afterwards. Back's going to insert himself. We teach him to do an inverted turn. So, in other words, when he inserts into the line of scrimmage, all right, now first off, backer shows, all right, we're going to do our best whiff job on him. But after we release, we're going to have him turn towards where the quarterback is and slide in the green. Now, we do set a landmark for him, especially with this defensive end's vacating. We set a two-by-two two landmark. But, again, if he or we as a team are robotic in that sense, we're not doing anybody a, a service. We're doing ourselves actually a big disservice if guys get in the pass lane and this guy's so robotic where he's in that two-by-two two landmark. So we tell him to get there, and then once he gets there and gets settled in, we tell them to get in the best area of green grass possible as long as it's behind the line of scrimmage. And that can be easier said than done a lot of times because he can start lurking above the line of scrimmage. You're getting illegal man downfield penalties thrown on you. But for us, again, going back to my Wyndham days, we set a landmark. We had him stick to it, and then teams get into our passing lanes. The quarterback, again, he would go one, two, three, and then he'd settle back and drop. All right, and then you'd be moving to the screen side and side arming the ball, the receiver and whatnot. We prefer him to get up high, and either if it's a clean passing lane, dump it to the back, or if there's somebody in his way, he's going to shuffle over and slide and get that overhand motion where he's throwing it over uh, down defenders that are chasing him. So I, I, I put the slip screen in here purely for the sake that our linemen know if we just call our slip screen, all right, it's the same rules as Roxy and Rita, or if we call a screen left, it's the same rules as Lola and Lisa. All right. Now, one tidbit I wanted to add on that slip screen is this end giving you a hard time. Now, again, we're – Pass setting three quick steps. We're going to hands where they should be, and we're inviting an outside rush. Now, one thing we do sometimes, again, it's based on an opponent. It's based on the player. It's based on what we may or may not be good at. But if we feel as though he's a pretty darn good player, 
We'll go one, two, three, invite him to pass rush. We'll lock on him, but then we'll take our inside hand for a right tackle, our inside hand, and we'll help him outside and create some space with his back to get to his landmark. All right. Now, if we feel pressure on that inside hand, we're trying to push him and we feel pressure on that, we'll just stay and we'll just lock it right up. We'll literally just stay and lock it right up. And if we end up going in a three by one set, We'll tell this inside receiver just to wall off the Sam, all right, and that's how we'll block that, all right. So, again, we're thinking he's going to go, all right. Now we don't have anybody – well, now, in this case, the flat defender, we're hoping if by scheme we bring him out, we're going to bring him out with us, all right. And now he's going through the shoot, all right. We have an ambush call here if we have one, all right. It's just an easier way for us to lock in that outside – uh, edge player might be giving us trouble. Now again, we take that inside hand and we give him, we don't feel any pressure. We feel as though he's going to continue on his rush and basically rush himself out of the play. But again, that, you know, that's something we practice, but it could be an in-game adjustment where, you know, later on, we might feel the screens there, maybe two quarters later, but we're going to make this one little adjustment where we're going to lock on him, or we'll give him a little pressure with our inside hand. If we feel pressure, then we'll stay on him, and we'll try to get our athlete into space. Now, again, if he's not robotic, and he's getting to a two-by-two two set, and then our tackle pass sets, and he's almost in his lane, he's going to know better to get himself into green, which could be inside here a little bit more. So that's one little adjustment we make on the slip screen. We'll get into the middle screen real quick, and then I have some video clips for everybody to see. Um, and then if we have time, Mike, uh, we'll get into this other stuff here. But um, so real quickly for us, middle screen. And just to go back real quick, when we run our screen, our slip screen, by default for us, it's going to our running back. That doesn't mean we can't tag somebody else in there. So again, Guys know by default it's a running back screen, but if we can set, if we say eight screen right, eight screen left, Y screen right, Y screen left, it could be any one of your players, all right, regardless of where they are, get them to the landmark, and that's a different way of dressing things up. So we'll have scenarios where the H is here, or maybe the tailback's here, and we'll swing him out and we're on eight screen left. Simple to put. All right, so now he knows he's got to get to where he has to get to. And from a terminology and play calling standpoint, for our kids, it's easy. Because our lineman knows, in that case, it's Lola. The H knows that he's being tagged, therefore he is getting the screen. The only thing you got to worry about is now this tailback's not involved in the play. And based on what you're doing week to week, you got to assign a role or a duty to him. Uh, in this case, I'm just putting him out here. But, again, you can, have, you can be an empty – you can be anything you want to be for us to run that slip screen and we'll just tag the player accordingly. So, middle screen. I do actually have a middle screen clip for, to show us. For us, again, we, you know, lineman wise, from here up, it's relatively the same, again, based on whether it's east, west, it's all these different small nuances. The middle, it adds a whole different level for us. Now, Again, middle screen for us, we feel as though teams up front especially in the middle, they're really, really strong. They may, they may outman us from, a, from an LB standpoint. They may surely be better than us, but we feel as though these guys, particularly here, all right, are strong pass rushers and they go upfield a lot. So again, you know, if you're a run, a really run oriented team, you might like the trap play in these scenarios, or you may want to run stretch and read that nose. Um, sometimes for us, we like to we feel as though whether it's an odd or even front, we feel like those guys inside the tackle are rushing like crazy and pinning their ears back. Or even more so, they feel as though we're going to be a team that's going to be screened from here and out. We'll come back and change it up with a middle screen. All right. So for us, you know, again, how we like to dress things up. Now, again, I'll show you on film. But one of the things we did 
the dress up middle screen was we just made an automatic razor call. Now, again, we had a different call for it. We call it Ram and Lion, actually, but that was the tailback motion and out. Now, in this case, we ran Y middle of screen. And how we do it as such, we start from the tackles. They'll pass that. And for us, if there's edge pressure, all right, so they'll go one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three steps. All right, if there's any sort of edge pressure, we're going to lock on it right away. These three guys are working together where there you go, one, two, three, respectively, three steps. And then we're going to release them, do our best whiff job on these guys, let these guys go. All right. And we're going to work in tandem where we're going to get the first vertical guy through. And we tell the guards to work head up to outside, head up to outside. We tell our center, hopefully have some wide eyes to block the first threat in between these two. Now, we do, or we have run middle screen with that ambush call as well. And sometimes we'll tell the guard to be the ambush guy, depending on who we're playing. For example, say this guy's a dude, and he's really, really good. We might want to go pass that, pass that, have him, these guys at least, and this guy be the ambush guy to decrease that guy out and get him out of the play. Again, it's all based on who you're playing and what your opponent's strengths are. But for us, we're running middle screen with these three guys releasing. Now, in this case, we're running it with a Y where these guys are going vertical. By default, we can attach past concepts based on what we want to accomplish. But the Y for us, is going to get two yards behind that center, all right? And, again, he's going to do some work before him where he's going to help on the end, one 1,000, two 1,000, and on three, he's going to get to that landmark. And just like we are in the slip screen before, that two-by-two two landmark, if he's in the way of the passing lane, he can't be a dummy, all right? And we give him the leeway of getting from guard to guard and creating a passing lane for the quarterback to throw. Now, whether it's with or without motion, the quarterback's going to go one, two, three, settle in and throttle, and he's going to pause for a quick second, and then he's going to continue backwards, getting high, and throwing that on the top or top of the toes throw over the pass lane and to our receiver. So when we run that, the middle of the screen, that's how we're blocking it. And again, for us, if he doesn't motion, if he's in here one way or another, we're going to swing him. Or we'll motion him out here, and we'll release him vertically but we're not going to keep them in here and get in the way of the screen call. Now, we can also, if we wanted to, all right, if we just said middle screen, by default, he's getting the, the ball, or he's a receiver, we'll send him loose, we'll insert him, and get him to the landmark. So, for us, really anybody within the confines, the tackle box, or just outside of it, we can tag as a middle screen guy. Now, we're not going to just do it during the game. We're going to practice it and get these guys practicing proper landmarks. And we're not going to run against teams that maybe do a real good job of two gapping and slowing down if nobody blocks them. But again, you know, when we run middle of screen, this is how we kind of try to, try, to, try to change things up a little bit for us. So, coach, I'm going to share my screen now. I'm gonna... Sounds good, coach. All right. It's up there. It looks good. Cool. Awesome. So, kind of take a step back. We run the, those double screens that we were running earlier. We were talking about there were times last year where our team, we, we weren't good enough to maybe smart enough or maybe, maybe, maybe experienced enough is the best word to use to run a true double screen. So, a lot, a lot of times we were just running, in this case, we're running the Lisa screen here. Like, we just, we're going to throw that no matter what. Now, if we don't have another end of the screen attached to it, we sometimes can put our running back here and flash fake away because, you know, we'll run stretch or power read. Uh, in this case here, I think this bag, he's lined up in the, in the pistol here, we motion him out purely for window dressing. Um, and we'll motion him out to the field of boundary. It doesn't really matter for us, but, again, this is a fourth and two situation. 
you know, we're somewhat beyond the middle of the field. You know, we're not going to punt the ball because, you know, we're, you know, we're probably not good enough to defend massive music in the long field in this scenario. We're, we're going to try to get a first down here. So uh, for us, this is week eight for us. We are running Lisa screen a bunch. We're going to get the ball or a, a guy in space here. All right. I kind of go back this tackle here, the front side, he doesn't go flat enough because he should be blocking this guy here. In this case, the Lisa screen, we want him releasing outside. And we know that them being mostly a cover three team, if he releases outside, he's going to play deep thirds with him. We also felt comfortable where he was going to get into a pass rush when he was shown it. All right. And we can basically not block him. But our tackle here, again, we're flip flopping our tackles this game. All right. He's going to be a little more flatter as he works his way up to this defender here. You know, our guard, he gets stuck a little bit, but you'll see him when the play develops, he gets actually a pretty decent angle on this front side backer. And our center, who's a short, pokey type kid, he doesn't, he's not really fast in space, he gets out there and involved in the play. And you'll see, once I delete everything here, that despite our front side tackle not making a very good block, I'm not taking a good angle, he gets a piece of him, frees him up, what complicates things, this guy here, he'll release outside, and the cushion will narrow. You won't see it on the screen. The problem is he lets him cross his face and gets by. Now, for us, if he's turning and running with him and he has backs to the play, that's great. But once he reroutes and sees what's in front of him and comes up and supports the run or the short pass, all right, he's got to turn himself into a blocker. Now, Pretty impressed by the way these guys find work, especially in the backside here, but I'll let the play develop here and show you guys. Again, tackle, bad path. He gets underneath it. A receiver right now, we're in good shape. We got these two blocks coming for these two guys here. All right, we're getting a quasi shoot created. This tackle is a little bit flatter, a little bit better for us. Get the first down, benefit of a couple of missed tackles, but you can see at the end here, there's a corner coming, and he's he's now beyond. Him. That's not good. This guy comes from the backside. I think he tried to help out here a little bit. Yeah. So again, again going back, we got a chance. We need two yards just by purely him catching and him making a bad block, we feel like we get the first down. We get the first down right now. Again, pre-snap, a little quick motion. We're hoping to expand him a little bit. He doesn't really do much of that. Again, his first steps are that way. Gives us enough room to get the first down. All right, again, we're, for this game, we're not as good with this guy reading a double screen for us. We hope to get to that point this coming year, but an easy way for us to get this guy the ball in space. Again, our starting running back was hurt after the first quarter. We got a scat back, running back type guy in here, and you know we're, we're, we're running a swing screen to the boundary here which again, we didn't do a lot of leading up to this game. We're mostly, if we're gonna swing guys, we're gonna swing them to the field. So in this case, we're just gonna lock up the edge and we're just gonna read him. And if there's any sort of leverage for us to run, this is the laser screen for us, all right? First threat, a second threat here, first threat here. We're gonna block those two guys. We're gonna reach for our front side tackle. And I'll, I'll fill you in on something. Most coaches that play us knew this. This guy here, number 64, wasn't very good for us. He wasn't very good. He did a real good job of not blocking guys. But in this play here, just enough for us, right? And we're going to make this backer make a tackle. And you can see the corner just by pure dropping back alone, is taking – this is a first and ten play for us. All right. He's so far back, the number one, 
knows that now he's the nearest threat. And we're just going to go to him. We're going to combo him. If he comes in late, one guy will peel off him. You know, six yard gain, we're okay. This is the middle screen. This is the one we had on the board. Okay, again, our backup running backs in the game now. We just told them, hey, you ram it. You all right? Ram for us is a little short motion. It's late. We're going to get him to expand. We're going to get him drop back. In this case here, our tackles are going to lock the edge, guys. And our front three guys are going to all pass that for a three count, hopefully, and then all release vertically. We didn't have an ambush call here until our receivers all run verticals. We're taking our tight end with our Y off the line of scrimmage. We're getting him behind the center for a pass lane. A little bit above the line of scrimmage there. Got away with one. He's a first-year player, big kid. He doesn't know any better. So, again, we felt, again, our tackles are locked up here and here, respectfully. They're tackling those, and I think they had a blitz there, too. It was good for us. Second and 13. Now we're going to get a first down. Okay, now we're running Razor Lisa. Okay, now again, he's razoring. He should be reading here. Now, again, we don't feel comfortable with this a ton especially the quarterback that we had at the time, we still have, all right? But we, we like this a lot. We like the Lisa. So basically our re has been kind of condensed for him. And it's like that triple option mentality, like the give unless rule. Well, for us, we're going to throw it here unless he is just nowhere near to be found on this guy right here. So we kind of changed the read a little bit for our quarterback and made it a little bit simpler. But – so, again, he expanded, and him expand that ever so little bit, tell the quarterback for us, we're going back to the Lisa screen. So, again, this this right – again, we're flip-flopping tackles this game. This right tackle, he's not very good. All right, he's supposed to block the five shade. He has a great job of blocking nobody here. But we get the Lisa screen in space. We got a guy who's pretty athletic with the ball in his hands, and he's in space. Now our tackle, a little bit of better release here, still a little bit high, but he's using that line of scrimmage, or well, a little bit above the line of scrimmage as a guide. All right, he can be flatter here, but now we got our guard out, and we got our, our porky center, he's going to get out there too. Now again, he's doing a pretty bad job, but right now he's escorting. He's a lead blocker for the receiver in space now. And we like that. Again, we're going laser now. All right. And again, this is a little bit predetermined. We're in the middle of the field here. Again, we got a tackle. And again, our good tackles here. By this point in the game, we're on play one out of two in the game. By this point here, Massabesic knew that we were flip-flopping tackles. All right, they knew it. So we're going to put him over here, all right, and hopefully get them to make a strength call by having a three-man surface to that side. But we're going to come back and run laser this way, and we're going to hope that he can just occupy that five shade well enough and get these guys blocking in space, all right, and get this guy a little bit of a gain. Again, we, we, we like the space matchup. I don't like this receiver chasing him now and not breaking down, but we like the space. Again, this inside receiver, he doesn't break down. He should be breaking down right now and playing man-to-man -man defense. All right, if we can break him down and play side to side and occupy that man, we got a lot better chance now of getting a bigger game. This guy knows that, that corner is expanding any sort of three-step look. All right, so he's going to spin him as much as he's going to take him. And when that cushion narrows, all right, we're sinking our hips and playing man-to-man -man defense. He has a pretty good job there, actually. But again, I'll go back and erase this trash here. Pre-snap, 
we're we're not blocking him. We're gonna say, hey, you get him. Now again, pre-snap, he's motioning a little bit. He already has leverage on him. So we like the, we like the chances out here. At worst, it could be a three on two game to our advantage. We get a, hold, we get a call for a holding call there, block in the back. Again, it's just undisciplined football there. But again, by the framework of the play itself, we like it. Okay. This is Bitterford for teams that know against Bitterford. They're, you know, before their coaching change this coming year. Um, big man to man team. Big man to man team. So, again, it's a scenario where we're going to offset him. I think we motioned him here, but we know that this guy right here has a man to man. So now we're going to compress the formation a little bit, bring this corner in, and have all this field over here to work with. Okay. Again, we were a work in progress here. But, again, we're, we're, we're running Razor. We have the least of choice backside of the boundary. But, again, we like – again, we're getting a little bit of an FSL look here. We are an FSL. Excuse me. We've got three receivers to the boundary. We feel as though they're going to go corner, strong safety, or free safety to the boundary. And now they got, we got a lot of free space over here in the field to work with. Now. If I was this running back who was very athletic, when I caught the ball, again, the ball's thrown a little bit behind him. This is our quarterback's first start of the year. All right, he's got somebody in his face. He's throwing off his back foot. doesn't look really good. But if he throws it in front of him and I work my way to the sideline that way, he's, he's either going to outrun him or we're going to get a big game. But, again, the throw forces him back in. I mean, the play didn't work the way we wanted to. Purely because of the throw. All this stuff here is just him doing good things. But again, right here, the ball is thrown in front of him where it should be. All right, on that parallel line. All right, we feel like we got a good matchup here. And again, we're not blocking that front side backer. We're doing the best we can. We're gonna, I think we're going to attach a crap call here. We are. Backer blitzes, we crack it. Now it's just corner on running back in space. All right, this is Lola. Now again, this is, we talked about dressing it up earlier, okay? This game, we compress the formation. Our starting tight end was out of the game. Uh, I think we had a lineman who was out as well, but this is our backup tight end. I'm sure you couldn't tell by his stance. But we're compressing the formation. We're going to run jet motion, and we, run, we ran some jet this game out of this formation. Now we're going to motion him. And this guy here was pretty darn good, number three for Noble. He's a pretty darn good player for them. Well, at least we felt he was a pretty darn good player. But we're going to say, hey, you know, we're going to block Lola. And we're going to try to put you in a spot where you're maybe moving or going fault step. He does a pretty good job of reading the guards. Again, we get our tackle out there. We get our guard out there. Now, again, our guard gets on the front side back, who is number three. But at least we get that's – a, that's a good – I mean, we had a penalty there, so it's I think it first and two it looked like. But we're dressing up with the jet motion. All right, tailback, jet guy, they're selling jet. These guys are all thinking jet. We don't got to worry about them. This guy is off balance. Three is reading guard. He's doing a pretty good job. He gets in, the, in there where our front side guard has a hard time walling him off. But we get enough of a body on him to get a first down. No, just short of first down, excuse me. All right, Razor for us. Again, we're running Razor to the boundary this time. We're in an unbalanced set here. We just call it special left, but we're going to motion this guy and basically just create a nub to the boundary here. And we felt as though when we motion this guy all the way across the formation, all right, the corner's soft. We're just going to take our front side tackle and reach that five shade. And we're going to run Razor. And we're going to say, hey, front side backer, you go ahead and tackle him. All right, that's what we're trying to accomplish here, you know. In our playbook, I mean, we, we just call this special left zap razor. So we're in a little special formation, and we're zapping. They're following the motion now. Now it's either here or here. 
responsible for the running back. We're not even going to block him. You know, for us, close to a touchdown, but that's a, that's a fourth and four play for us right there. All right. In the red zone, again, goes back and do, we don't care the situation. We don't care what spot of the field we're on. This is just an extension of the run game for us. That's all it is. All right. One final play. This is during preseason for us. This is a double option for us, a double screen play. All right, we're running east, which this guy is going out. All right, and we got Lisa here, which this guy should. Again, this is one of our first controlled scrimmages of the year where he should be going out and coming back against the grain. All right, he should be releasing. All right, but again, we got down block on the mic, get the guard pulling around. All right. And if we go back, this guard pulling around at this juncture in the season, he was an absolute mess. Um, just getting into a stance and was really hard. But you know what? Getting him on the space, we're not requiring him to bulldoze a three shade in front of him, the two eye in front of him. We want him to get out in space a little bit here. Just try to occupy the guy the best you can and get our athlete in the space. Now, again, a lot of us missed tackles, but the principle of the play is. That five shade, probably shouldn't even have thrown it. Probably should have came back to Lisa. That goes back to what I said about 10 minutes ago where the quarterback makes a wrong decision or the coach makes a bad call. Get the ball in space like that, it makes you look really good. All right. Coach Hath, we're about an hour and 15 minutes in. Do we get time for one more, or should we should we call it a day here? Maybe maybe we call it a, a day, Coach, but maybe we have you back in, and, and you can talk a little bit, uh, maybe some screen game part two, and, and maybe tag something else onto that as well. Yep, yep, absolutely. So just in conclusion, I appreciate everybody being on here. Again, I, I echo what I said earlier about Mike. I mean, thank you so much for uh, getting this thing together and uh, for everybody taking your time out of your day. and. Uh, Lastly, good luck this season, everybody, and, and be safe, please. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate you coming on again, man. It's awesome, everybody that's reaching out just to help other coaches out. And, and uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, Coach Capone and I have had some good conversations about, you know, just growing the game in the state of Maine. And, and if everybody can share what they're doing and, and make us all better, it's just going to be better for the game. Awesome. Well, thanks again. Some of you guys want to jump back. I'm going to stop the recording, but if some of you guys want to jump back on here, uh, back on the camera or whatever, and, and uh, chat it up a little bit, I got no problem with that.